All right, everybody, it's good to see you again. We're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs 2020 offseason. So we're looking a year ahead, an offseason ahead, at some of the finances. And, and we're really looking at this one question alone. And that is, how do we keep Patrick Mahomes, Chris Jones, and Tyreek Hill on the team in 2020? We're not answering the question whether or not we think we should keep all three players or what their value is as players. We're simply answering this question. As we head into the 2020 offseason and season, how do we keep all three guys on the team based on the finances that we're already looking at uh, for 2020? So we're looking ahead here by a whole season, and I know some of you may not be interested in doing that, but for those of you who do and who are interested in that kind of thing, here it is. I'm going to start off right here with the amount of money that's available in 2020 overall. The cap, the overall cap for all NFL teams is going to be somewhere around $200 million. Now that will fluctuate a little bit. We don't know exactly where that cap number is going to end up. Some teams will have more than others because of cap space that they rolled over from a previous season or two. But in general, I would say $198 million, $202 million, it's going to land right in there somewhere rather safely. $200 million is the general cap for all teams across the board in the NFL. You won't see that fluctuate by more than a couple of million dollars. So that's pretty much a fixed number right there, $200 million. At the bottom end of this, this is for all teams, this is specifically for the Chiefs, it's for all teams, you have what I call the poor 35. Now, this isn't necessarily the worst 35 players on the team, this is just the 35 players on the team who are making the least amount of money. Most of these guys are still on their rookie deals, they're still on the contracts, maybe not the first year, but maybe the second, third season. Most of these guys are still on their rookie deals, and then you have a few guys who are just coming in as free agents, just really roster fillers, trying to fill up certain little specific roles. They're going to average a million dollars apiece. Some of those are going to be making the league minimum that offseason of about $600,000. Some of them are going to be making a million and a half, two million dollars, but the average for these guys is a million apiece, and you can't get any cheaper than that. The only way to get cheaper than that, the only way to get rid of this $35 million is to simply trade all your draft picks away and sign players off the street at the $600,000 minimum for NFL players. Of course, no NFL team is going to do that, so you really can't get away from this number. This $35 million is pretty much a fixed number. That's pretty close to what all NFL teams have. Some of them have fewer than that, maybe 30 players, um, and the other guys are making higher amounts of money, but you're not going to be able to get much lower than that. That $35 million is more or less a fixed number. It can go up, meaning that you have more players getting major playing time on your team at low salaries, but it's not likely to go down. So that $35 million is pretty much a fixed number as well. You can't really dip into that. You can't change that. You can't make that go away. These players right here are making the absolute lowest amount of money in the league. Very difficult to get away from that. So $35 million, I say poor in quotation marks because in reality, for most of us in America and around the world, making $600,000 a year would not be considered poor at all. But in NFL terms, in NFL money, of course, that's very small money right there. So $35 million right there, pretty much locked in. You move up a step, the middle class. The middle class in the NFL is a very underappreciated class. These are the guys who make anywhere from 3 or $4 million up to about 7 or $8 million dollars. A season right about that seven seven eight million dollar mark this is a group of players right here who man they're usually starters and usually they're very important starters matter of fact if you look at the upper class that's eight players and the middle class that's ten players you still haven't filled out all the starting spots in your lineup plus a few important backups so a lot of these guys end up starting and a lot of them end up playing more as the season goes along due to injury. So these players here are very important. This middle class becomes vastly more important. And yet we see a lot of NFL teams devote very little money to this group right here. You move up here for the Chiefs. This number right here is the amount of money that the Kansas City Chiefs have already promised to their top eight players for 2020. So that $113.7 million, that's an actual number as well. It can move, but based on the contracts they have right now, and these are the eight players. This is the amount of money that the Kansas City Chiefs have already allotted to specific players for 2020. And these are the eight guys, starting with Frank Clark and going all the way down to Dr. Tardif at guard. We'll look more at that in a second. So this number here 
is not pulled out of thin air that $113.7 million already promised to eight of the Kansas City Chief players in 2020. It's a lot of money to pay to just eight players, but there are other teams in the NFL doing that. What that means is, starting with $200 million as your overall cap, taking out $35 million for your 35 lowest paid players on the roster, take out $113.7 million for your top eight highest paid players on the roster, and that leaves you with 51.3 to pay your middle class guys your next 10 players, all right? So that 51.3 is not all promised out. Some of it is, but not all of it is, but that's basically an allotment right there. $51.3 million allotted to that middle class group. We're gonna come back to that in a minute, but that is your money right there that you're looking at, all the money that's available to you in 2020. The question is this, and I wanna get back to this and stay on it. How do we get Patrick Mahomes, Chris Jones, and Tyreek Hill on the team in 2020? How do we pay all three guys and keep them there? Let's take each player one at a time. We'll try to show you what we're looking at. For Patrick Mahomes, he's already under contract in 2020. $5.2 million. It's the last season of his rookie contract. Technically speaking, Kansas City doesn't have to do anything with Patrick Mahomes in the 2020 offseason. They can just leave him right there at that rookie number. Even if they decide and find a way, and I don't know if they will or not in 2020, but even if they find a way to lock him up long term, very often you won't see this number change when guys are under a contract for, for their rookie deal and they tack on a massive contract on top of it. Very often you won't see this number change for their final year of the rookie deal. It's kind of a courtesy that a lot of agents and their players do for NFL teams to encourage them to go ahead and come up with that next big contract. And that's, that number there sometimes changes a little bit, up to seven, eight, or $10 million, but I don't think you'll see that change drastically, even if Kansas City comes up with a very large contract to offer Patrick Mahomes. So I'm gonna leave that number for now right there for 2020, $5.2 million. I don't think the Chiefs have to be worried about how in the world we're gonna keep Patrick Mahomes on the roster. Technically speaking, he's already there, he's already covered, he's already included in this $51.3 million middle class, okay? So some of that money is already promised out, some of it is already promised out to Patrick Mahomes. So technically speaking, for today's video for 2020, we're gonna leave Patrick Mahomes right there at $5.2 million, even if he were to sign a massive contract during the 2020 offseason, it shouldn't affect his 2020 cap number by too much, unless they really totally do a massive restructure for that deal as well. Let's move on to Chris Jones and Tyreek Hill. Neither one of them is under contract for 2020. Uh, they're both on their final seasons right now for 2019. So you have to do something with these guys. And like I said, we're assuming that we're going to get them on the team somehow. So beyond just letting them go, and some of you might be in favor of letting them go. I'm not going to cover that today. But for those of you who are in favor of letting go, go of one of these guys or both of these guys, certainly that's an option but today's video is about trying to get these guys on the team. Start with Chris Jones. Where are we gonna find money for Chris Jones? We can't get it out of the cap. The cap's not gonna grow by any more than $200 million. We can't get it from the poor people because we've gotta have these guys. We've gotta have 35 players making a million dollars on the average each. We've gotta have that. So the money is either going to come from the wealthy eight, or it's going to come from the middle class allotment, one or the other. There's nowhere else it can come from if you're the Kansas City Chiefs. The money to pay Chris Jones, and Tyreek Hill in a minute, but I'm going to start with Chris Jones. The money to pay Chris Jones is either going to come from these top eight players right here, or it's going to come out of the middle class allotment. Let's start with that. If we're trying to sign Chris Jones to a contract in 2020, and we're trying to figure out what his 2020 salary cap number is going to be, and we're going to take it out of the wealthy eight. That means we are either going to restructure somebody's contract or we're just going to flat out release them. Okay. If you're going to take it out of that money right there, if you're going to take it from the wealthy eight, if you will, it's got to come from either a restructure or it's got to come from releasing. Let's take a look at releasing. They're not going to release Frank Clark in 2020. They just signed him to a huge contract. So that's not going to happen. Sammy Watkins making $21 million in 2020. If they were to release him, there would be a dead cap hit of $7 million, which means 
They still have to pay him seven million dollars, but the rest of that twenty-one million dollars they don't have to pay Sammy Watkins. So if they wanted to release Sammy Watkins in the 2020 offseason, they would be saving fourteen million dollars. That's a very easy way. Some of you would like that, and some of you wouldn't, but that's a very easy way for them to dig up the money for Chris Jones in 2020. Doesn't solve all of his contract problems going beyond, but at least for 2020, you could get Chris Jones under a new contract. You could get his 2020 cap number to be $14 million without any difficulty. I don't think he's going to settle for $14 million each year over the life of the contract, but the other years could be bigger. 21, 22, 23 could all be bigger salary cap numbers. And it's very normal that you would see that first year to be the smallest. So I don't think there's any question for Chris Jones to sign right there in 2020 for $14 million. The easiest, quickest way, and this is my preferred way, if I'm keeping Chris Jones at all, my preferred way is simply to cut Sammy Watkins at $14 million. But let's say we don't want to do that. Let's say we want to try to find another option. Not going to release Tyron Matthew. Just signed him to a new deal. Even if you wanted to, you would actually be losing money. You'd actually be losing $4.7 billion to cut him. So nothing is happening there with Tyron Matthew. At Eric Fisher, some of you might be intrigued by this idea. Eric Fisher could be cut. His dead cap, all you actually owe him after that offseason is $2.6 million. You would actually be saving $9.5 million right there. So if you wanted to, I don't think the Chiefs are going to do this. Matter of fact, let's talk about all three offensive linemen, okay? Mitchell Schwartz, whom they just re-signed, right here at number six on the list, you would actually be losing money to cut him, so there's no way they're cutting Mitchell Schwartz. Even if they could save money, I don't think they would do that anyway. Down here with Dr. Tardif, Dr. LTD, LDT, you could save $5 million right there by cutting him. I don't think the Chiefs are going to do that either. In my opinion, and I could be wrong, I don't know what they're thinking, I don't have any inside information here, but I would be very surprised if they cut any of their three top offensive linemen. That's Eric Fisher at the left tackle, Mitchell Schwartz at the right tackle, or Dr. Tardif at the guard. So I don't think, even though they could save money by cutting Fisher, and they could save $5 million by cutting Dr. Tardif, I don't think they're going to cut any of those three offensive linemen. That brings us to Anthony Hitchens at this point. And who knows how well Hitchens is going to play in 2019. He might turn it around and have a really great year in a defense that I think really fits him better. We don't know that yet. At this point, I'm sure a lot of you would be very much in favor of letting go of Anthony Hitchens after what was really a disastrous 2018. Didn't perform up to expectations at all. The problem is, Anthony Hitchens, you would only be saving $3 million, okay? You already are guaranteed to pay him 84 his cap number for that year would be 11.3, so you'd only be saving $3 million. Some people might would do that. Some people say, why couldn't you just go ahead and use that post-June 1st designation like a lot of teams do? I don't mean to add too many layers here, but because 2020 is the final year of the current collecting and bargaining agreement for the NFL, teams aren't allowed to use the post-June 1st designations for, for this season, for that offseason right there. So if you were going to release Hitchens, you couldn't divide this dead cap money up over two years anyway. I'm not a huge fan of those things anyway. I think that's still $8.4 million of wasted money, wasted cap space. But only do it if it's absolutely necessary. Even if you could, though, which you can't, you'd still be having that wasted cap space. But you can't use a post-June 1st designation on him in 2020. So therefore, you would only be saving $3 million. You'd be losing $8 million. I don't think that's something the Chiefs would do. I think they'd just rather, for the $3 million, just keep Pitchens on board. We already covered Schwartz. We covered Tardif. The only other guy left is Travis Kelsey, whom, of course, nobody is going to release. But even if you wanted to, there's no money to be saved there. Guaranteed $10.5 million, $10.5 million cap number. So, long story short, yada, 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 when I'm trying to find money for Chris Jones out of the top eight highest paid players on the, on the roster, the only way I'm really going to be able to do it, unless I cut Eric Fisher, which I don't think is going to happen, is to cut Sammy Watkins. And I think that's something that could very easily happen. It wouldn't surprise me at all if it did happen. Matter of fact, I think it probably will happen. Now, one other way that you could actually get the money out of the wealthy eight for Chris Jones 
is if you started restructuring everybody's contracts. NFL teams do a lot of this these days. They take these players' contracts and they cut down the cap number in, each, in, in 2020 for each of these players. But what that does, that increases the cap number for each of these players in 2021, 2022. It also gives them more guaranteed money, which means it harder, makes it harder to trade them or release them because you've got guaranteed money, higher guaranteed amounts tied to those players because of the restructure. So you can, and in some cases, I think it's a great idea to restructure, but I think restructuring is something that you have to do very carefully. So without getting into a lot of details here, the Chiefs could restructure some of these guys and find more money. Because the Sammy Watkins release is so easy to do and saves me $14 million, and I think that's about what Chris Jones's cap number would be under a new deal during his first season 2020. We're just going to call that one today right there and do that right there, $14 million. The one other thing you could do, if you're not going to dip into the wealthy eights money, you dip into the middle class money. The problem with that is if you sign Chris Jones $14 million out of this, that leaves $37 million for nine players which is an average of $4 million a player. What that means is more of these guys are going to start. Your average starter, after you get past these top guys, your average starter is going to be worse, worse of a player. Instead of being an average guy who can kind of hold down a position, your average player, your middle class guy, is going to be making less money. He's not going to be as good. And in a lot of cases, he's actually going to be a hole in your defense or a hole in your offense. And that really starts to open up a lot of chances for other teams to take advantage of. So I don't like getting any money out of this right here. Matter of fact, let me stop right here and say this before we cover Tyreek Hill. Over the past decade now, the teams who are winning Super Bowls, the teams who are consistently showing up in the Super Bowls, the teams that are consistently showing up in the AFC and the NFC title games, they are actually paying less to their top eight players and applying more money to this middle class group. In other words, they're spreading the money around, they're having a deeper roster, they have more solid players at different positions throughout the offense and defense, they have fewer holes in their starting lineup, and it makes them less likely to be devastated by an injury, even if an injury does happen to a top player, because there's less of a difference between their top players and this middle class group they're easier and they're more likely to be able to handle that injury and take that injury. So that's why I don't advise dipping more into this middle class money. Matter of fact, I advise cutting down the amount of money you're giving to your top eight players. But that's what we can do with Chris Jones. He's taken care of for 2020 and more or less beyond that as well with the new contract. That leaves Tyreek Hill. And some of you, and again, this is not a dialogue today on whether or not Tyreek Hill should be on the team whether or not he should be making X amount of money, what his value really is to the team. The question today is, if we're keeping all three players, how can we do it for 2020? One way for Tyreek Hill is, again, to go through and see if you could cut somebody. Assuming we cut Sammy Watkins already, the only other guy we could cut is Eric Fisher. Who do you want on your team, Tyreek Hill or Eric Fisher? Well, let's try to keep both. So in that case, we're going to go through and try to do some restructures. How much is Tyreek Hill going to be making? You're going to hear some wildly varied answers all the way from 18 to 20 million dollars a season down to somewhere between seven eight nine million dollars a season i think his value right now because of the trouble in the off season fair or not his value right now is probably somewhere around 10 or 11 million dollars a season i covered that on another video so i really need to find about 10 million dollars for 2020 for Tyreek Hill. This is where you could really start to get into partial financing. You could restructure a couple of these guys. You could probably restructure Eric Fisher. You could probably even restructure maybe uh, Dr. Tardy. If you could restructure both of those guys, not change your salary structure too much for 2021 or for 22, scrape together probably about five or six million dollars. And then if you were just insistent on keeping Tyreek Hill, you could dip into this middle class money by about four or five million dollars and scrape that together. So that's assuming Tyreek Hill and his agent would be willing to sign for 10 or 11 million dollars a season, maybe a short-term contract, maybe a two-year deal. You might be able to get him and his agent to do 
until Tyreek Hill's value builds back up based off of the trouble we had this offseason. But if you're looking for ways to do it, and we've tried to keep this video short, there's a lot of things we can still cover here. We're not going to do that in this video. For 2020, this is the way to do it. Mahomes already under contract at $5.2 million. Even if he signs a new one, you could probably keep this number here. Chris Jones, the quick and easy way here is to just cut Sammy Watkins, use that $14 million, apply it to the first year of his brand new contract as well. And for Tyreek Kill, I think somewhere between this middle class money and restructuring a couple of these guys, maybe you could restructure Frank Clark, maybe an Eric Fisher, maybe Dr. Tardif, you might could restructure, get together about five or six million dollars and then apply that to Tyreek Kill, assuming him and his agent are willing to sign a two-year deal may be worth 10 or 11 million dollars a season. Don't even know if they would do that. But that's a way right there to keep all three players on the team. I close with this. A lot of people ask about just finding money for players. You can always in the NFL, you can always find them find the money for any player that you want to sign. Always. It's not like the NBA where your money is all locked in and one or two guys quickly take up all the all the max salary slots. It's not like Major League Baseball where the money is guaranteed. In the NFL, any player that you want to keep, that you want to sign, you can always do it. The question is, is it worth it? Can we win by signing this player to new and bigger and larger amounts of money? Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes when you sign certain of these players to large contracts, the answer becomes, now we're just 8-8 eight and eight every season. Now we're just mediocre every season because simply having stars in the NFL does not lead you to victories, does not lead you to Super Bowls. Hard a lot of times for people to understand that because they simply see these great players and they think if the more of these great players I have, the better I am. In the NFL, you have to have 22 starters plus a couple of more for kicker and punter and, and things like that. And then you've got to have some depth as well. So you really need in the NFL, you really need 30 good solid players. And when you're giving half, more than half the money to eight of those players, it gets really difficult to put together a team that can win. So, yes, you can always find a way to get these players on the team. You can always, quote unquote, find the money, as a lot of the people in the media like to say. But the question is always, is it worth it? Can we compete for a Super Bowl when we sign these players to these kinds of contracts? And sometimes the answer is no. But if you're looking for a way to do it for 2020, this is it. We'll try to put together a 2021 video, probably even pick up with the same charts here, and show you how much the situation changes for 2021. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.